Hey everyone, Ultra is the name of the game when it comes to this year's Ultra Premium smartphones. And Xiaomi's Mi 11 lineup is no different. The Mi 11 Ultra might be one of the best smartphones that they've ever made, and it's certainly their top tier device this year. It has a striking new design, powerful hardware, and one of the biggest camera sensors in a modern smartphone. Clearly, it's more than ready to compete with the likes of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So, if you're looking for your next flagship, is this one it? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is our review of the Mi 11 Ultra. As far as the design goes, well, there's really nothing else like it. The Mi 11 Ultra has a glossy ceramic back and a polished aluminum frame that's extremely thin on the sides. It comes in cosmic black or cosmic white like we have here. The back does pick up fingerprints, but it's not nearly as much of a smudge fest as glass phones. It weighs in at 234 grams and in the hand it feels around the same size and heft as the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Galaxy S21 Ultra. The most notable and hate it or love it part of the back's design is the camera setup. The camera island is so massive that it may as well be called Australia, and it sticks out significantly. You'll see three cameras on there and a 1.1 inch AMOLED display. In photo mode, you can use it to take selfies with the back cameras, though for some unexplicable reason, Xiaomi doesn't let you use it for selfie videos. I really hope that they release an update that allows you to do that because otherwise, that's quite the loss. When you're not using it for photography, the display shows the time, notifications, and the battery you have left. On the front of the phone, you'll find slim bezels, a hole punch in the upper left corner, and a gently curved display. I emphasize gently because it really is subtle and has nothing to do with the extreme curves we've seen on phones in the past. The display is protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, and the Mi 11 Ultra has IP68 dust and water resistance, so this Ultra has some level of protection against the elements. There's also an optical under-display fingerprint reader that has comfortable placement and was quick and reliable when we used it. As for the screen itself, the Mi 11 Ultra sports a 6.8-inch AMOLED panel with a 1440p resolution. It has a refresh rate that goes up to 120Hz and a 480Hz touch sampling rate. You can actually set the refresh rate to either high or standard mode, standard being the 60Hz mode and high being the 120Hz mode. Though if you do set it to the high mode, the Ultra automatically switches between refresh rates depending on what's being displayed and how you're interacting with the phone. For example, videos default to 60Hz, while when you're scrolling through the phone, it'll be at 120. Surprisingly, getting a higher refresh rate while gaming was unreliable, and we were often stuck at 60Hz even on titles that go up to 120 on other phones. The Mi 11 Ultra supports HDR10+, and Dolby Vision, so Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and YouTube all serve HDR content. The display also has 10-bit colors, meaning it can show 1.07 billion colors instead of the usual 16 million that you get on other phones. You'll see the smoothest possible tonal gradients and no banding on here. Color reproduction itself was generally good, though not perfect. Original mode had essentially perfect results for sRGB calibration, which was funny because the dedicated sRGB mode in the advanced menu was actually less accurate. The auto mode isn't remarkably on points, and we saw bluish whites. As far as brightness was concerned, the display is fantastic. In bright light, the screen will go as high as 943 nits with auto boost enabled. And Xiaomi claims a peak brightness of 1700 nits with HDR content. I dare say that even reading on a beach shouldn't be too much of an issue. The Mi 11 Ultra has Harman Kardon branded stereo speakers that scored a very good loudness rating on our tests. They had a good balance between left and right while we were watching videos, though we did notice some sound spilling out from the earpiece when we were on a voice call. The sound quality was significantly better than on the Mi 11 and the phone sounds notably more bassy while mids and highs remain clear. In fact, it's one of the best sounding sets of smartphone speakers that we've tested recently. The Mi 11 Ultra also has NFC for more easily connecting to headphones and for wireless payments. Also, at the top of the phone, there is an infrared sensor that you can use with the Mi Remote app. The Mi 11 Ultra has a 5000 mAh battery capacity, and with the screen and the high refresh mode, we got a 95 hour endurance rating in our battery life tests. While this is good, it wasn't quite as impressive as the 114 hours on the S21 Ultra. 
where the Mi 11 Ultra has the Galaxy Phone Beat is charging. The phone has a 67 watt charger that got it from 0 to 100% in just 37 minutes and was at 89% at the half hour mark. The OnePlus 9 Pro is quicker to charge, but the S21 Ultra is sluggish in comparison. The phone also supports 67 watt wireless charging, which would be just as fast as the wired version. It also supports 10 watt reverse wireless charging should you need it. The phone comes with either 256 or 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 flash storage, so we didn't really mind the lack of expandable storage here. It sports a Snapdragon 888 5G and either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. While the Mi 11 Ultra is tuned to be more conservative than the likes of the OnePlus 9 Pro and the Vivo X60 Pro Plus, it got a predictably high number in benchmark testing. The Mi 11 Ultra will more than handle everything that you throw at it with ease. Also, you should know that though it did heat up under sustained loads, we didn't notice any thermal throttling. The Ultra has Android 11 with MIUI 12 on top. You'll find some standard MIUI characteristics here, like a security app, proprietary gallery and video apps alongside standard Android 11 features. MIUI 12 is very customizable and there is a theme store that allows you to change everything from system icons to wallpapers to always on display styles. The always on display options also include breathing light, which means the edges of the display will flash with different colors with different notifications. The rear display has similar functionality, but the themes are more limited. If you tap on it, it'll show the time, notifications, and the occasional motivational quote. It also times out, so it won't be on constantly. Of course, using this baby display requires that you leave your phone face down, which we really don't recommend to begin with. There's an app drawer that automatically organizes your apps into categories like social and health, though you can disable that function if you wish. MIUI 12 also includes super wallpapers, which are dynamic wallpapers that zoom in each time you pass a particular screen. The effect is striking and makes the phone have a very coherent and overarching visual experience. The notification shade is split into a notification center and a control center just like on iOS. You can disable the control center if you don't like it and the notification shade will revert to a more standard Android design. The camera hardware is where Xiaomi have really outdone themselves. This is some of the most advanced camera hardware on any phone out there. It starts with a 50 megapixel main camera that has OIS and the biggest sensor on a smartphone. Then there's the 48 megapixel periscope telephoto camera with OIS and a native 5 times optical zoom. Finally, there's the 48 megapixel ultrawide camera with phase detection autofocus. It's one of the widest ultrawide cameras out there with its 128 degree field of view. The laser autofocus can serve as a focus to aid any of the three cameras. During the day, the main camera outputs some of the best 12 megapixel images we've seen. Shots look more like they're taken by a regular camera rather than a smartphone camera. Detail is excellently defined and the phone did great with both straight lines and random textures. Noise is non-existent and colors were vivid, especially in nature scenes, but not to the extreme. We do wish the exposure would have been brighter as the dynamic range is more than wide enough to handle it. The photos by the Periscope cam have excellent detail and nice micro contrast. Shots weren't quite as clean as on the main camera and we did see some noise. Dynamic range is some of the best we've seen on a zoom camera and exposure was better than on the main camera. Colors were actually a good match for the main unit. The ultrawide snapper had class leading performance during the day too. There was abundant detail, not too much sharpening, no noise to be seen and excellent dynamic range. Exposure was accurate too. The only issue we saw is that since the ultrawide camera is so wide, there is a noticeable amount of barrel distortion despite the software correction. The ultrawide's autofocus capability allows it to take good close-ups, though it doesn't quite focus close enough for us to be able to call them macro shots. When the light got low, we saw some night mode processing even in the regular photo mode. This is because by default there is a toggle switched on in settings called Enhanced Image Quality. It enables a sort of auto night mode. It was quick and unobtrusive and it didn't cause any issues. The photos have a wide dynamic range, well-preserved highlights, though like during the day they look a little underexposed. Street lights can make some areas look a bit too orange, but otherwise white balance is good. The detail was plenty too. Night mode was pretty much identical to the regular photo mode shots with the enhanced toggle switched on. Plain photo mode has less detail, a narrower dynamic range and a lot more softness in the images. These are some of the best ultrawide low-light shots that we've seen so far. They have a lot of detail, controlled noise, and spot-on colors. There's less of an orange tint too. Highlights are more blown out than with the night mode though. 
switch on the night mode and the dynamic range issues are fixed and we see a lot more detail in the shadows. There's night mode sharpening, but it's done with restraint. As far as 5x zoom in low light is concerned, this phone is a champ. We saw extremely detailed photos and very low noise. Dynamic range isn't quite as impressive, but it's good enough. Even though you have the selfie display right next to the main cameras, you also have the option of taking a regular selfie. It's a 20 megapixel snapper with gyro EIS available for videos. Selfies had great colors and dynamic range, and in general, they were decently detailed. We do recommend taking snaps using the rear display though. The big sensor does have a pretty shallow depth of field and makes for a pretty nice natural blur. The Mi 11 Ultra can capture video up to 8K at 24fps and up to 4K at 60fps with all three cameras. Stabilization is available for all resolutions and frame rates. 8K video is very good. There is a bit more detail than the 4K capture and the dynamic range is just as wide as on the lower resolution. In general, this was very usable footage. 4K at 30fps with the main camera produced very high quality videos. There was excellent detail, wide dynamic range, and nice colors. 4K footage from the ultrawide camera was among the best we've seen too. While 4K footage with the periscope camera had a lower bitrate than the other two cameras, it too was great. Stabilized footage with the main camera was impressive, walking was softened, and pans were handled without abrupt transitions. Stabilized footage taken with the ultrawide camera was even better thanks to the shorter focal length. We haven't seen 5x zoom footage as stable as the one from this camera. There were no micro jitters, just a gentle wave as the phone ironed out our movements. Despite the name, the Steady Video Pro mode wasn't all that impressive. It didn't manage to stabilize footage while running very well and it's locked into 1080p. This is a beast of a phone and its camera setup more than lives up to the flashiness of its camera bump. Actually, if we're talking about cameras, the only phone that really competes with this one is the Galaxy S21 Ultra. As far as everything else is concerned, well, it's sort of hard to find a fault. It's got a fantastic display, excellent speakers, good battery life, fast charging, and a high quality build. No matter how you look at it, even though it has an eye-watering price tag, this phone delivers. So if you're looking at the best flagships on the market, you definitely need to check this one out. Thank you for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.